Thanks, Abacek. Well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the webinar. Here's the agenda that we've set up. Uh, introductions are complete, so I'm going to start on the overview of the SAP Real Estate Management System itself, uh, give you some idea of how it sits within the portfolio of SAP software, and then go through, after that, I'll go through a brief demo of real estate features and functions, and then wrap that up with a conclusion. So, diving right in, uh, the overview uh, of SAP Real Estate. I thought I would start off with just showing you some uh, companies that are currently running the software. Many of these are on the West Coast. Uh, a couple of them I've actually worked with in the past, such as HealthNet and PG&E, uh, as a consultant uh, way back when, as uh, both a consultant and as a uh, SAP engagement manager. And uh, you'll see this varies from number of employees as well as revenue. Now, real estate management falls within the category of overall asset management within SAP. And within asset management, you can see a number of clients uh, that are currently using the software from both commissioning and performance and uh, operations and optimization of assets, as well as the actual deployment of, asset, of uh, real estate management itself, including Forest City and Marcus Millichap down here. The SAP real estate management itself falls within the overall solution capabilities of SAP Financials. Here's the SAP Financials solution map. Uh, you'll see standard SAP functionality within these swim lanes. Under corporate services, here we have the real estate management module itself. For the demo today, I'm going to show you not only just the features and functions of real estate management, but also how that integrates with the financial accounting, with GL and accounts receivable especially, and then also show you some of the analytics and financial reporting uh, and operational analytics that are available within real estate management itself. So at this point, let's go ahead and go into the demo of real estate. And here's the high-level uh, features of functions that I'm going to be showing you today. We're going to start with just setting up a facility itself, buildings, floors, rooms, etc., and then go through the lease management. What is the contract that I'm going to have uh, as someone who's leasing a unit uh, from a building, for instance? Uh, after that, we're going to cover cash receipts. How are you going to be billing for that particular contract for that particular tenant? And then finally, wrapping up with some of the reporting capabilities. So at this, let's go ahead and kick off a facility setup. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and show the views of real estate and how this will affect what we see later in the demo. So SAP Real Estate is a space-based system. And each of the space business uh, objects themselves um, start off with the site. So the site can be a collection of buildings. It can be um, a, even uh, not buildings. It can be open space or other uh, real estate units themselves. And then typically underneath that will be an, uh, one or more buildings under, at the site. And within the buildings, uh, moving on down the hierarchy, you can have floors that are set up. And typically on the floors themselves is where you'll have the particular space uh, in this case, space units or apartments, which I'm going to be showing you in the demo. Now, what ties this together, of course, are multiple attributes which are assigned, characteristics that are assigned to each, the site, the building, and the rental units themselves. These can include um, things like square footage or other features and characteristics of each of these particular areas, whether it's sites, buildings, or the rental units themselves. When the uh, rental units uh, themselves are rented out, uh, those are controlled by lease documents, which are linked to every single rental unit um, that you've set up uh, within this hierarchy. So at this point, I'm going to show you how to do a facility setup. Okay, starting with facility setup, I'm going to log into the SAP system itself. And here's the home page in which I've set up a link for a Hawthorne Retirement Group. But this home page can have many different links and information available to you. You can set up Outlook here. You can set up non-SAP links showing news, weather. Uh, you can even set up individual report um, uh, output. You can have links here to uh, look directly into transactions within SAP. 
So this becomes very handy as, a, as an overall staging place for most of the work that you're going to be doing in SAP. And we try to design it so that the end users are going to spend 80% you know, of their day if they're using SAP, just using, uh, using this kind of as a launch pad for all of their SAP use rather than uh, logging in, logging off to various systems. So within the home page itself, if I go up here and want to look at additional transactions within the system, I can cl either click my way through it, or if I've uh, used it before, I can go up here on the navigator side here and, for instance, take a look at all the project management links that I've used before. So in this case, I'm typed in proj, and here's all the list of project management transactions that I've used in the past. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, this particular project management link, and boom, I've already, I'm on the project management workbench, and it's showing me the project management transactions available to me. By the way, these workbenches themselves are all security controlled. So if my security profile does not allow me to access project management, I will not uh, see this workbench. I will not have access to any of these transactions. So let me go ahead and uh, click back on the back arrow here. I'm back to the home page. And uh, the next thing I want to sh show you is the concept of uh, dashboards and what dashboards are available via home pages as well. Here is an example of a dashboard for real estate. Uh, it incorporates Google Maps, for which SAP has, uh, we have an agreement with uh, Google Maps to be able to utilize their functionality in our dashboards. This is a SAP Business Object Celsius dashboard. And you'll notice uh, we've set it up with KPIs for real estate. So at this particular real estate site, the Greenfield Corporate Center, I am showing graphically rent per square foot for office, industrial, flexible, and real, real estate over a three-quarter period. Down here, I'm displaying some critical dates that are coming up, and we'll talk about this later. These are called reminders within the real estate system. And down here, here you'll see the all-important uh, vacancy rates uh, within the system itself. I can go ahead and uh, click on another location. So in case in, in here, I'm going to go ahead and click on South Carolina and show the York Ridge location. Notice that the data has now changed. I'm showing uh, York Ridge's information, the critical dates, and the vacancies. One other thing to notice with these dashboards, uh, Excelsius dashboards, is that if you, on some of the graphics, when you put your cursor on it, you'll get a little pop-up with the information, in this case, vacancy, and you can see that vacancy has been slowly climbing over uh, the three quarters. I'm going to go ahead and click back, and here I am on the real estate homepage, and I'm, I've clicked on the, uh, the real estate workbench, and I'm seeing the overall real estate navigator at this point. Okay, here you see that I have actually gotten onto the uh, navigator uh, launch pad here. And within this workbench or navigation panel, you'll see what's called a launch pad. Here for real estate, I've got transactions, a workflow inbox, and a lease form. This lease form we'll be addressing later in the demo when we use this to actually create a contract via an Adobe form. Uh, but you'll see here that uh, if I want to expand my, my workspace here, I simply click on uh, this arrow and this will get rid of this launch pad, give me a little bit more room within the system itself. Now, uh, the, this Real Estate Navigator also has a search bar here. Uh, I can either click on this, in this case it's looking for, at a contract, but if I click on this uh, down arrow, this will give me all the different uh, search fields available. I'm going to click on Site here because that's what I'm particularly interested in, the site that I've set up. And here's my site uh, that I was last using. It's Site 702 called Stony Brook for Assisted Living. And you'll notice that beneath this are the two buildings that I've uh, set up uh, for this particular demo. Now this information uh, here is giving me all the information, uh, this area here, excuse me, these panels give me all the information about Site 702. Uh, but it also gives me uh, additional information about uh, by clicking down here and, and uh, clicking and, and expanding this, I can see what other uh, rental objects I have underneath Building 1 and Building 2. But first, I, I want to get rid of these navigation panels up here. So I click on Personalize, and I click off, off the Show Navigation Panels. This gives me a little bit more room. 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and expand building one, just clicking on that, and you'll see I've set up six different apartments. Uh, if I double click on apartment 102, I'll get 102's information right here. So for instance, here's the name of the rental object, apartment uh, 102, here's some of the val validity periods. Here's a whole series of information about it, and I can either click on this directly, um, but before that, I want to point out this, another feature here, and that is, what if there are rem uh, tasks that are due with overall real estate management, and how will I know if those tasks are actually getting done? Uh, so right here under this reminders bar, I simply click on that, and here's a whole series of tasks that are now overdue. Notice the red lights, because these are past their due dates. I can use SAP Workflow to set up and say, hey, you know, this fire inspection, you're way overdue on that, or you're overdue on your insurance, insurance certificate. And those workflows can go to the correct agent within your company and will remind them uh, via an email link or uh, other ways of notification. And that person can then be able to get on the system and actually complete the tasks. You can also use this filtering functionality right here to, to uh, determine uh, if there are any future tasks uh, that need to be done, and when are they, you know, when are they due? So in my case, I want to find out, you know, when are when, when are when are my leases expiring? Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on this uh, on this uh, filtering, and I'm going to look for directly for lease expirations. Click on this, and here's my list of uh, expiration dates for various leases. You'll notice these are far in the future, and therefore their status is green, not red. Okay, another way of accessing data that you want within real estate is to use the SAP information system. I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon here that provides me with this criteria, and I'm going to be searching for master data, specifically uh, all the apartments that I've set up under the Stony Brook uh, site. So I double-click on this measurement, and this provides me with the search criteria for what I'm looking for. In my case, I know the company code and the site number. But if I didn't, uh, each one of these, see these little envelopes? Each one of those provides a drop-down, and you could do a search for a company code, or you could do a search for a site. That goes for any one of these search criteria. Notice I can also include a range of uh, sites or a range of company codes. Uh, once I've entered in the search criteria data, I click on Execute up here. And this provides me with the layout set of the information that I've requested. Notice here's the building. Uh, here's the apartment one, apartment 101, apartment 102, 103, all six apartments that I've set up under building one of the, my site. Uh, notice uh, there's uh, information uh, regarding apartment 101. Here it's showing the amount of square feet uh, available in apartment 101, as well as two parking spaces that have been assigned to this particular apartment. Uh, notice down here, apartments 405 and 406 have not been assigned parking spaces themselves. Now this data is completely configurable. I can uh, make changes to what I show and don't show. Uh, I can do all other changes, such as uh, here's a sort ascending, sort descending button. I can use additional filtering in, in here. I can do additional summarization by using this icon. I can print this as is. I can download this under this icon to download it onto an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, or I can change the, the layout completely using this icon. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and change the, the layout. And here you'll see uh, a column set of all the additional data uh, that's available to me versus what's actually being displayed in the layout set itself. So in this case, uh, should I decide uh, I really don't want to see building, it's not important to me, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the field and click on this arrow, and that will move this over to the column set that's not being seen. And then I save that. Once that's done, you'll see that building is now gone, and it's just showing uh, uh, the data layout set without that particular column. Now, within this layout set, I can drill down further directly into additional data about Apartment 101. So once I double-click on this line, it actually shows